Hi everybody, Michael here, the Rain Coach with Green Venture. We're here at Eco House talking about winterizing your rain barrel. Now obviously we've already had our first snowfall, we've had our first frost, so hopefully your rain barrels are already winterized to some degree, but if they're not, that's okay. There's still time and maybe what we go over here will give you some ideas for next winter. Now when we talk about winterizing the rain barrel, what we're talking about is decommissioning it so there's no longer water getting into it during the, the winter months. So we're trying to prevent ice buildup because ice leads to cracking and that's one of the things that rain barrel warranties will be void if there's ice damage. So you want to make sure that there's no ice in it. So what you want to do first is make sure that it's completely empty so there's no uh, leftover water in it from the fall and you want to make sure there's no leaves or roof sediment or any sort of muck in it so typically I'll take the top off of mine and just spray it with a hose a couple times empty all the sediment and leave it upside down ideally you're gonna to want to put it in a garage or a shed or something like that if you can if you have to leave it outside just make sure all the valves are empty and it's left upside down and ideally covered with like a tarp or something so we're gonna go over two different types of rain barrel setups. The first one is the one where there's no immediate foundation next to the rain barrel. So maybe that's uh, on a detached garage or a shed, or maybe you've brought the downspout over a walkway. Either way, whatever the case, the rain barrel during the summer setup is not directly next to the foundation. That gives you a little bit more room to play with because the threat of water damage isn't as, uh, as relevant there. So. What I like to do in that situation is just move the rain barrel and keep all the downspout arrangement exactly the same. The one thing that I do add in the winter is a, a planter bucket or some sort of a large kind of catch basin with holes in the bottom so that as any water uh, comes through the downspout, it's falling into this kind of temporary catch reservoir that has holes in it so the water can leak out. The reason for this uh, catch reservoir or bucket thing is really just to prevent erosion and to give the, the water a little bit of a place to kind of gather before it is slowly let out by the holes uh, that are in the bottom of the bucket. Now, the second arrangement is the arrangement where the downspout is directly next to the house, where the, the foundation is immediately right there. That one you're gonna have to take a little bit more care because even in the winter, we still have some mild weather where uh, stuff can melt. So you don't wanna have just a, uh, you don't want to have nothing there, right? Because now you're, you're putting your, your foundation, your home at a little bit of uh, water damage risk there. Okay, so what I do is I have two different downspout assemblies. I have a, a summer arrangement and I have a winter arrangement. Now, right at that first elbow where the, uh, the, summer, the summer assembly kind of starts coming off the wall, I take that entire piece off and I put a new piece on that goes down against the wall. Sometimes I'll strap it just to make sure that it's secure against the wall. And then there's another downspout that's directing the water into some sort of permeable area, roughly six to 10 feet away from the foundation. We've got two examples here that kind of outline the two different cases. And with that, there's still a huge amount of variety. So if you have any questions about your specific setup, uh, be sure to let us know and we can try to give you uh, some help and guidance on what may be best for, for your situation. Thanks guys.